In this video, we're going to talk about significant digits, and then we're going to apply it to solving triangles, so different ways you can solve triangles. So first, let's just talk about what is an exact number. So there are two possibilities for what this could be. The first is it's a number that comes from the result of just counting a bunch of stuff. So when you count stuff, that's considered to be, by definition, an exact number. Or it's the results from theoretical work and not from measurement. OK, so what does that mean? All right, so here is an example. Let's say that we've got this room, it's 12 feet by 18 feet, and we're doing some project and we need to know the diagonal. So, you know, we can get to the diagonal by really treating this now as a triangle. This is one side, this is the other side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say my 12 squared plus 18 squared, that's gonna be my diagonal. So of course I can do the work by taking the square root of each side. And if I calculate this, I get this crazy decimal. This is in, in feet, right? Now, you you know that like practically, like just thinking about this, I would not give this number, right? For here's what the diagonal is in a, in a project. You'd probably round it to like 22 feet. And okay, so we, we can see now a few issues with this. So the the issue with this is that First of all, if I, if I gave that decimal, that would be kind of weird to report for a construction project that you don't give like a decimal like that. That's not like available on a ruler, right? And another thing with this is that like we calculated this number. We did not actually go out and measure the diagonal. We just like figured out what it was. And so when we do that, when we just calculate in that instance, that is the definition of this exact number okay all right so what do we call the number of digits obtained by actual measurement if i if i go out and i measure versus calculating it this is what's known as significant digits and just a note here so the results of physical measurement of course are always going to depend on the accuracy of a measurement tool so we have this this concept of significant digits and it's it's kind of something that helps us wrap our minds around you know things that can happen like the accuracy of the measurement tool um, you know when, when you are measuring something okay so I want to give you a few examples of this because I, I think that like when you first learn about this this can be a little weird so some examples of things that make significant digits when you have trailing zeros that are being spelled out, that's what's known as significant digits. Um, any zeros between non-zero digits are known as significant digits, and then any non-zero digits. I think this can mess with your head a little bit, so I wanna just show you some examples of, of what this would be. Okay, so starting here with 21.00. So like I said, trailing zeros count. So this would be one, two, three, four significant digits because we actually went out and, and called out that 0.00. Um, and then this number 5,100.13. So the zeros in between are considered to be significant digits. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be six sig significant digits. And now here's kind of the, the curveball, the one that might seem kind of surprising. So trailing zeros count for significant digits. But these, these zeros before the decimal, these do not count. So this number here, you'd only have two significant digits. So that's like a, a thing you you kind of have to wrap your mind around. It's, it's part of just the, the, the definition of it, if, if you want to think of it that way. OK, so I want to just take a second to talk about significant digits for angles um, and how to count some of these. So I have a few different categories, and then I'll, I'll tell you how many significant digits those have, and then I'll, I'll show you an example. So first of all, just a degree in general is going to have two significant digits. Um, so things like 42 degrees, 15 degrees, these are considered to be two significant digits, OK? Um, 10 minutes or a degree to the nearest tenth, this is going to be considered to have three significant digits. So here's where this can get kind of funky, right? So I've got 37 degrees and 20 minutes. So this last zero, this is not considered, this is not counted in our significant digits. So it'd be one, two, three. So it's three significant digits or 72.5 degrees. So notice that this is a 10. This is minutes in terms of 10. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, so on. This situation when you have a uh, multiple of 10, that's going to be three significant digits. So again, this is something that you're just kind of getting used to. Um, 
Okay, next, minutes or to the nearest hundreds. So notice now I'm not calling out 10 minutes, just minutes in general. This has four significant digits. So if I had like 32 degrees and 22 minutes, so this has four significant digits versus this which has three. So again, it's something you just have to get used to. Or you have this case where I have four different numbers that would also work. And then finally, 10 seconds or to the nearest thousand, this will be five significant digits. So again, notice what I'm doing here. I've got 13 degrees, 27 minutes, and 40 seconds. So any multiple of tens for the seconds, that's where this kind of counts. So we have either five, five significant digits here or this would be considered five significant digits. So it's something you just kind of have to get used to looking at. It, it might be a new definition for you. Okay, so how do you perform calculations with significant digits? Um, you want to note the number of the least number of significant digits, and then you round the final answer to that many digits. So look for what the least number is and then round to that many. And you want to keep in mind that the answer is no more accurate than the least accurate number. So sometimes, you know, you, you might be like, oh, I don't, I don't feel like this is accurate, but if you're using significant digits, like this is something that you just kind of keep in mind when you're when you're using significant digits and sometimes they get called significant figures or sig figs by the way okay so where i want to apply this is i just want to look at a few examples with some triangles and show you kind of best practices with this just to help you wrap your head around this okay so here's the situation i'm going to give you a triangle and some measures with it so i'm told that angle a has the uh, measurement of 27 degrees and 10 minutes and then this side C is 13.5. Okay, so let's go through this. We, we are going to need to use trig functions to solve this. So let's start with sine of A. So we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And in this context here, that would be side opposite over hypotenuse A over C. All right. So I know what my A is, right? And I know what my C is, so I can plug this information in to get tw sine of 27 degrees and 10 seconds equals A over 13.5. Okay, so I think just for accuracy, usually what you're gonna wanna do is like try to set this up so that you can do your calculation in, in one go. So what I mean is, Oh, and also the other thing that you want to go, sorry, before I talk about that, uh, also note the number of significant digits. Um, so these are two things that you just want to kind of notice. Okay, so if I set this up, I want to set up my calculation like this so I can get kind of the most precise answer. So then when I round for my significant digits, I can keep that in mind. So if you calculate this on your calculator, and by the way, if you don't have minutes, then you're going to have to convert this to a decimal. I've talked about that in, in other videos, so I'm going to kind of omit that here for now. Um, but if I go through and I, I calculate this, I get 6.16. And so notice I've got one, two, three significant digits. So that's exactly what we wanted to have. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to note that 6.16 over here because we are not done. Okay. So a note, you might be tempted to use this 6.16 now in our calculations and say, oh, I could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out B. So the thing is that you want to use given info over what you calculated whenever possible. So it's true, I could figure out what B is by doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but it would actually be more accurate. It's just better to use the given information, and I can use this given information to figure out what B is. So that is going to be the preference. So that's kind of the, the way that you want to treat this. This isn't always possible, and I'll show you an example where this is not possible, but we'll get to that. Okay, so we're going to use cosine in this case, adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, that's going to be B over C. And so I can just go ahead and plug in this information again into this piece here. So I get cosine of 27 degrees in 10 seconds. This is B over 13.5. Um, so I know I can set up B like this. And then once again, I just want to keep my um, significant digits in mind. So in this case, I get B is going to be equal to 12.0. Cool. All right. And so now, um, and, and so again, just note the three significant digits. So now I have these two sides. I already know C. I know what A is. So now I can back into what B is. Um, so I can just do 90 degrees 
minus 27 degrees and 10 minutes. So I can just go ahead and run that calculation out to get 62 degrees and 50 minutes. And then again, you can notice here that we have the three sig uh, sig uh, significant digits, so we are done. Okay, so that's one example. So now let's just pivot, and I wanna show you another way that this can present itself. Okay, so in this other example, so I've got sides given. I don't know any of the angles. So now I have to figure out the angles from these two sides. This actually is a little bit trickier in some ways. So I'll go ahead and I'll use my, my sine function again. So sine of A is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse because this is starting with the information that I was given, right? So this is how I can implement A over C. So I get sine of A is gonna be this 42.35 over uh, 53.35. Two seven, and I talked about in a previous video. So the way to to solve for a in this case will be to use the inverse sine function. So what I want to plug in my calculator, I've got inverse sine, and then I plug in forty two point three five over fifty three point two seven, and then I'm going to round this entire number. Okay, so this comes out to fifty two point six six degrees. However, we are using minutes and seconds, of course. So I only need four significant digits. So notice I've rounded this 42.39 minutes. I have rounded this to the number of digits that I need because this is four significant digits. This is four significant digits. So you always want to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to just note that over here, that work that we just did. And from here, unfortunately, you just have to calculate everything else. So unlike in the last example where I could leverage that information I was given, to calculate some other pieces of um, information, I can't really leverage this to like find cosine or something, right? So instead, now everything else I'm going to have to calculate. So here is an example then where, well, one thing that we could can't very easily calculate right now would be that angle B, so it's 90 degrees minus 52 degrees and 39 minutes, so I can run out this calculation. But the other, the other side now to figure out what B is, the only way I can really do that is I have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a, a situation where you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. The other problem we were looking at was one where like you could have, but there was another method that was a little better. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I can go ahead then and just plug my information in. So I've plugged in my C, my A, and just done all the work there. And so once again, so I just wanna round this to the number of significant digits that I need. And so that's it for that one. And so that covers it for this video. So you just want to keep in mind the number of significant digits that you have when you are working with triangles. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.